Welcome everyone to Talking Hands. Hey I'm guys. The prodigal fool. I'm joined tonight by my co-blogger on the Prodigal Guide, Straight Six. Hey yeah. folks. And um, we normally have a watch for you uh, to, to talk to you about. Uh, but what? So tonight we've just got a box. The box. No, no, no. Wait a second. No, we do. We do have a box. Can I? Can we show people? It's that we, name. We don't normally do the packaging, but we just really like the we packaging do. on this watch. We this just thought crazy. it'd be fun to show it to you. It is part yes. of the watch owning experience, the watch own, buying and owning experience. And so, just thought, why not? Just a really neat, and neat when, piece of packaging. And when you open this package, what do you get, big guy? What have we got? Very nice indeed. So, this is the Boom et Mercier Caitlin Chrono. Uh, this particular model is the reference 10068. You got it. Um, <coughs> and by the way, not available on the market yet. It's, it's spring 2012, I yeah, guess. Yeah, brand new. I don't think this has hit the shops yet. Well, I say that. As at the time of filming, God knows when I'll get around to actually posting this video. <laughs> <laughs> what distinguishes this particular model, the 10068 reference, is um, that it's got a flyback chronograph movement. It certainly does. And now, by the way, it's an in-house movement, isn't it? It is. You remember? The Coup de Joux Peru... 8147-2. Dash two. For, for the nerds out there. <laughs> Do you want to tell everyone um, about the distinguishing characteristic, the flyback movement? The flyback movement. Well, look, folks. So say you want to time just how quickly you can run to the wine cellar. So Okay, so, so, I, I, so actually, we're, we're throwing out something else about this watch. Legibility, not so good. But anyway, for those no, of you who are nervous, there is a second hand running there <laughs> at the moment. So show me the flyback mechanism. Flyback mechanism is I press on the bottom right of button up. Your second time starts again. And you go and straight back to zero. And then straight back to zero, and then basically I can keep on counting how many times the fool can run back and forth to get me the, what is it, Saint Joseph 2000? And this is presumably something for, for timing laps, I suppose. I would presume it is if you had several fools running to the wine cellar to get your yeah, wine, then exactly. indeed you'd want to time each of them individually. <laughs> so, and we'll stop there. Give me some specs about case, etc. the rest of it. Is, it, is this a glass? 44 mils. Uh, kind, of, kind of big? Kind of well, we'll get to that. Right. We'll get to that. Yes and no is the answer, the short answer. Okay. Um, it's for the case is only four mils. <coughs> yes and no. <coughs> Steel, you know, a mixture of polished and satin finish. Obviously, a sapphire crystal. Um, it's about sixteen and a half millimeters thick. As we've already mentioned, it's got the the, the manufacture uh, movement, the flyback chrono mechanism. It's got a tachymeter. And a telemeter. I have no idea what a telemeter is. I know what a tachymeter is. But basically... I know what a transporter is, but I don't know. <laughs> it just refers to the markings on the outside of the dial. It allows you to measure different units of, um, uh, of travel. Now, what we've also got is a nice, what they call a cheveux-shaped sapphire glass with an anti-glare treatment. I think that you'll see pretty quickly. So, um, we've been holding around lots of different lights. I think you'll find anti-glare mm -hmm. treatment works quite nicely. Well, Merci is actually a fairly old brand, which I think is enjoying a bit of a renaissance in, time, in terms of the design work that they're doing. Yeah. And I think you'll agree with well, me. You know, the models that we saw, the Hampton collection and the Caitlin collection in particular, yeah. um, were just very clean, impressive, stylish bits of design. You know, we both, I think, discovered, well, new, newfound respect for the brand. But until the very last moment, I was Man. willing to walk away thinking, yeah, nice, but, but nothing special. Until yeah, they, they this whipped out. this out of yeah. the wash box. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, I was pretty blown away. I mean, I think this is just a stunning, <coughs> stunning piece of um, design. I'm just going to do a wrist shot. Right. Wrist side. And he's gone too, goes, because <coughs> at 44 mils, <coughs> too big for these. Now... <coughs> This may be the last talking hands I ever do. I yeah, seem to be, yeah, I seem to be dying. I, I, by the way, I will be walking away with all of these other Rolexes. So, um, this may be my, my swang song. Get, your swang song or your swan song? Um, there you go. Is that time? So yeah, I, so okay. that's 44 mils. And, you know, opinions may vary, but I, I, I think that looks great on the wrist for me. Yeah, if you, if you hold it at a slight... Here, there you go. Look, guys, you see what you get there is this great contrast of what I can only describe as the rose gold coloring and the hands and this lovely sort of matte black dial. It's so not really nice. It really is. And not only is the size um, completely appropriate, doesn't feel oversized whatsoever. For a slightly larger wrist. For, for my wrist, absolutely. For your wrist. Um, but Perfect. also the weight of it and, and just the general... The feel. The feel of when you're wearing it is, is, is spot on, really comfortable. I, I, I wasn't expecting to like this as yeah. much as I did. Um, this is a watch that you could wear and, and really wear for a long okay. time and fall in love with. All right, now that's great. Having said all of that... Having said all of that... You we... put it on your feminine, girly, sissy little wrist, and frankly, it, 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 it One just... One can tell why I never like coming here. It just, it just looks all wrong. 
Okay, Is so this we'll, we'll try that. Hold on a sec, guys. Bear with me. We'll snap it on. This ah. lovely light brown alligator strap, by the way. Nice. Hmm. Right. The strap's lovely. There we go. Okay, so look there. I and think if you try it, that, how's all that of a sudden look? it just looks like an oversized one of these gauche oversized new watches. Yeah, and I think it does. This is a very interesting phenomenon. It just shows you that at this size point, forty four mils, it can go right, and, and it can go it. wrong almost. You know, so, the drop of a hat. But, is, but isn't this what you and I have often said? Is that really divides the market? Why would you do that? If when we talk about forty millimeters. This size being universally, or yes. even thirty nine, some people say. Yeah, I've, I've, my my preference is forty. It's mil. forty. I, I don't think it gets better than that, and that looks great on you, um, and it looks great on me. Forty mils is about right. You know, and then it comes and gets eaten. Forty four mil. Forty two and forty four in this case is is borderline. But as I say, um, I really really like wearing it. Oh, so, yeah, and, and by the way, and by the way, I'll, I'll say it does look oversized on my wrist, but it's extremely comfortable to wear. This oh, yeah. in no way, shape, or form is. And there'll be plenty of people out there who are looking for that specific yeah. look, that oversized look. I just think it's a little bit uncouth. Is there any but criticism? It's a very particular and, in some ways, a quite demanding design. This it's, is it's, not for everybody. No way, shape, or form. In terms of all the sort of retro flourishes yeah, and absolutely. Yeah. So the kind of person who likes this sort of retro flourish. You've got to imagine the whole outfit that goes with it. Maybe Tim Tomato might wear this sort of a thing, you know. Tim Tomato would look great in this. He'd in fact, f happy no, I think about it. I think he has. I think he wears one. <laughs> he does. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but guys, but it's a serious point, right? I mean, I think it, it narrows the sp the, the, kind, the, the old group school. of yeah. buyers that would bu would buy. But I, and I don't it's think it's not a jeans and t-shirt type of watch. No, but also, uh, likewise, it's not an old dusty watch in a way that I think not some of the Bateks are quite old for me, and yeah. they're just of another age. Um, so interesting. I think basically it's a bit of a you know it's a bit of a tight watch. You're gonna have to find somebody's in for it. I I think it's a beautiful watch. I think you're being too harsh on the design. It's a bit retro, um, but I think it's a very it's a elegant. Retro. Well it's retro. It's a very elegant, well proportioned piece. I've already said the color scheme works beautifully. My bad. My one criticism of it um, is that the hands are almost illegible. Well, actually, the whole thing is almost a legend. No, but the, but the actual hands just sort of blend well, yeah, in. I can't. Time. By the way, I can't even. What time is it now? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's okay. best. It's best if you don't know. Um, and I think not being able to tell the time is is, is is kind of a stumbling block. I think on a watch. On a watch. Yeah. You think that may pose some kind of difficulty? You know, for me, at least, I don't want to sound picky. Purpose. I don't want to sound picky. Maybe a little fly in this retro ointment. <laughs> you want to you you hear what it is? What? Price. Oh, you're not going to bring money into it again, are you? Uh, we've always got to bring money into it. How the hell else are we going to advise anybody what to buy and what not to buy? Um, here's the bad news, guys. This baby retails for about £4,800. Yeah, it's a little bit punchy. It's a bit punchy. Now, well, well truth be said, it? no, no, it's a fly-back in chrono, in-house fly movement, corner, transparent... Lovely, you know, sapphire case on back. the back. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's not... You're not getting... with some heritage and some pedigree. Yeah, okay, but... Here's your point. Unique design. Here's your point. You're right. You're not going to see an awful lot of these floating down the street. But on the other hand, it's a Boubin Mercier selling for close to £5,000. And I think you're going to start to hit some pretty serious stumbling blocks there when it comes to most traditional buyers. On the other We're hand... We're into this perennial discussion about the value of brand and yeah, history. Because yeah, right. from a technical perspective... It's totally worth it. It's Yeah, line this up <coughs> next to some of the perhaps better known brands... <coughs> Excuse me, offering you know technically similar um, timepieces, and this is perfectly good value. Yeah. All right. So I think it's a very interesting discussion. It's about how much is is a brand worth yeah. actually, and and can Boom and Merci pull yeah. off this sort of a thing? Yeah. The other thing is a lot of people ask, yeah. So I'll buy this for five thousand pounds. How much is it going to be worth a year from now? And I think that's where it may start to get quite. I like to say that I'm charmed by it. That I think it's good value for money, and I like to know who I could uh, recommend it to. That's all. Let's wreck him up. You? What's your bottom line? Come on now. <coughs> my bottom line, <coughs> and maybe my last word on any watch ever. Oh, I'll, please. I'll really um, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> do you think that, um, you know when, when Roger Ebert died? Or was it... Uh, was Ro it Siskel Roper or... Died? Ro oh, Ro you're right, Siskel died. Anyway, I'm just wondering, <laughs> whether once I die, it seems like I'm close to it, whether you'll just replace me and continue the show. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, Jim? People get this joke when the Talking Hands comes out, but there's a very cute bunny with a pink little ribbon around its neck that I've lined up. Oh, yes, you've you. already got my replacement. I've already got your replacement. My replacement's already in training. Yes. <laughs> <coughs> 
me, the bunny, the candles, and the Talisker. It's magical. Damn it. Um, so, sorry, to get back to what I was saying before I was <laughs> salted. Um, I wouldn't... I don't think I'd bring no, you, myself well, no, you to don't spend my mind on it. But, 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 but I really, really like... I mean, I just think it's just a beautiful watch. Look, I think there are plenty of people who want a, a watch from... Um, a traditional manufacturer with, with some history and some pedigree yeah. and they want something out of the ordinary they're not going to see on the other person's wrist yeah. they don't want to spend crazy prices but they're willing to spend a bit yeah. um, and they like a more traditional looking watch bang on alright I think, right? I, I think if it's you're t- not if it, you're not as superficial a and as numb nuts as we are and not so obsessed about having you know sort of the recognised brands then I think you're onto something very nice here I think there are plenty of people who don't care enough about brands who are much more concerned about the way things Look subje- uh, objectively than anything else. Uh, who, who would, who would well, go for that? And well, so they guess should, what? and I admire them and, for it. Okay, and guess what? They've, got, they've got the they've got the balls to do it, and Absolutely. I give I give that respect as and well. It, and it's a beautiful design. My problem is I've just never met anybody who would do that. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you very much for. Oh, joining sorry, us. we're still finishing. Okay, yeah, we're still finishing. Oh, I thought we stopped filming. Please join us next time. Um, we, we look forward to it. We'll possibly still be squabbling. We'll certainly still be drinking. <laughs> In the meantime, wear your watches and both good health. Good health, guys. Good night. Thank you.